The Nintendo Switch successor is likely launching in 2025. We don't know when, we don't know how, we don't know what everything's going to be or what everything needs to happen for it to come out, but we just know it's likely launching next year. And as we lead into launch, I think we need to have this conversation because it appears a lot of gamers, especially here on the internet, really want Nintendo Switch 2 to fail. They obviously want Nintendo to fail. We know the whole Nintendo is doomed, right? They've been doomed for over a hundred years. Fans have been wanting Nintendo to go away for some time. And it makes it really hard to be a Nintendo fan sometimes on the internet. Now look, there's a lot of great things about being a Nintendo fan. All the discussions we have, the communities we've created, the copious amount of Nintendo content creators of all ilk and variety for different things, RPGs and, you know, Animal Crossing and Farming Sims. And then you have, you know, content creators for Nintendo for Pokemon and Zelda and Mario and everything in between, right? Like there's such a wide variety of Nintendo content creators. And with there being such a wide variety and such a huge community, you would th figure that, hey, you can kind of avoid all of the noise, all the haters. Uh, they're not going to come around and try to rain on your parade. But this is the internet. And on the internet, and even sometimes in real life, it gets very difficult to be an outward Nintendo fan, especially when you're older. I'm 38 years old and... I literally got bullied in real life not too long ago in a store for being a Nintendo fan right in front of my children. Yeah, I'm sure I'm the one with the problem. The one that's just there to shop for food for my kids with my kids with me. Not the person who took time out of their day to bully someone in front of their kids. Yeah, I'm the one with the problem. All right. See, being a Nintendo fan is a very difficult thing at times. There's a lot of rewarding things. The games, the memories, the laughs, the fun. But the internet just doesn't let us be. And a lot of this really just stems from console wars. I think we're all aware of what console wars are. You're championing one company above the rest. And I'm going to be straight up and honest with you right now. I am biased for Nintendo. I've been playing Nintendo for over 30 years of my life, and I really enjoy their games. However, I also play games on PlayStation and Xbox and PC. And when I consider the wide variety of content I enjoy, no, a Nintendo platform alone does not give me everything I want as a gamer. That is why I game on other platforms. So my thing here is while i do have a major bias for nintendo i do think console wars are pointless i don't think nintendo is a god amongst little you know demigods or whatever i think hey you know what there's a platform there's something out there for everyone if you're totally satisfied playing games on your phone hey that's awesome i'm really happy for you if you rather be part of the pc master race and that's the way you go and you like to emulate games and you like to uh you know just play pc games and you're, you're out there playing hell divers too and hey man more power to you nothing wrong with that enjoy your hell divers your league of legends your age of empires your world of warcraft and all the rest have a damn good time play all the indie games you know like pc gets every indie game under the sun have fun. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe you're a big Sony guy. You just love the DualSense controller and the PS5 and the Astro Boy game coming out and Spider-Man 2, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Rise of Ronin, and so many others. God of War, Uncharted. Fine. Have fun. No one's taking that fun away from you. If you're an Xbox guy, you're really into Halo, you really like all Bethesda's offerings, Doom and all that Starfield, right? Fine. Go ahead. Enjoy that. Nothing anyone else does in life can take your enjoyment away. However, we live in a reality where, for some reason, Nintendo is at the ire of everyone else. Now, console wars happen everywhere, right? If you're a PlayStation guy, you've certainly seen Nintendo and Xbox and PC people trash on PlayStation. If you're Xbox... Boy, it's it's been a rough generation for you, right? The Xbox Series X and S. Like people have been crapping on Xbox left and right. So you guys are getting it probably even worse. 
But Nintendo is starting to get it too. And they're getting it ramped up. The closer and closer we get to that Nintendo Switch 2 system. And I think I know what's going on. You see, being a Nintendo fan on the internet means we have to accept that we're constantly going to be told Nintendo isn't good enough. Right now, what the Nintendo Switch is knocked the most for is, you know, sometimes it's the lineup this year where, oh, this lineup isn't good enough. I'm like, okay, it's a transition year, but okay, fine. The lineup might not be good enough for most people. I think a lot of people are pretty happy with the lineup, but hey, it is devoid of Nintendo's biggest hitters. Yeah, we have Echoes of Wisdom and, and Mario Party Jamboree and a new Mario and Luigi game, but none of those games are here yet. So I, I get it, fine. Um, people want to attack Nintendo uh, about how weak the Nintendo Switch is. Man, the Nintendo Switch is a joke. Look at Hogwarts Legacy. Look at all these third-party games. Look how crappy they run. And while there is a lot of reasons, not just one, for why the games run that way, yeah, the Switch hardware is dated. It's 2015 technology. It is now 2024. We're nearly a decade into this, right? We're in the eighth year year of Nintendo Switch. The hardware should feel dated. <laughs> like, if we get four years ahead and PlayStation 5 hardware doesn't feel dated, I'll tell you exactly why that's the case. Because games being made specifically for PlayStation 5 were being held back by the fact they were still being made for PlayStation 4. And I'm not kidding. The games towards the end of the PlayStation generation are going to look amazing and top tier and these amazing graphics and all this crazy stuff. They're going to look the best of the best because it happens every PlayStation generation. But why does it keep happening at the end of the generation? Well, because they weren't fully utilizing the system at the beginning. By the end of the generation, it should feel old. The system should feel old. It shouldn't feel better than ever, especially when the technology's nearly a decade old. But Sony does it differently. Nintendo, though, obviously takes a different approach. They don't go all out with the most powerful platforms. They don't give you um, the top tier specs. However, their hardware is pretty well taken advantage fairly early in the system's life. Uh, Breath of the Wild took pretty big advantage of the software out the gate. So did games like, I don't know, let's throw out there Super Mario Odyssey. You know, if you want to say Splatoon 2 maybe didn't take the most advantage, Odyssey definitely did. Smash Bros. You know, Xenoblade. So there's a number of games that are pushing the Switch hardware, like in year one and two of the platform. So by the time yeah, we get to year eight, it's going to feel a little dated. You know, Tears of the Kingdom does have aspects in it that are just technologically and visually better than Breath of the Wild, but it's not such a stark difference to impress you. And there's a reason for that, right? Like, again, the Switch has already been pushed. It's already hit the peak of what it's capable of putting out. So... When we look towards the future for Nintendo Switch 2, we're getting a lot of hate and a lot of goalpost moving because some gamers, a certain sector, just don't want Nintendo to be successful. That's the truth of it. They don't want Nintendo to be successful. They want us to suffer. Um, and, and some of this might be jealousy. Uh, we, we have to admit, like, Nintendo's on top. Regardless of what Sony wants to say or, you know, play, or Xbox, like any of the people that are like really simping for those systems, Nintendo is laughing their way to 150 million in console sales. Nintendo has sold 1.2, 1.3 billion in software, maybe 1.4 by the end of this fiscal year, right? Nintendo is in the midst of their most profitable generation of all time, launching theme parks, Lego sets, and everything in between, right? Nintendo's on top of the world right now. And because they're on top, people just want to tear them down even more. So while they're making fun of the graphics, they're, they're going to do the age-old thing. This is what I actually got bullied for, um, is that Nintendo games are for kids. Uh, how many times have we heard that? 
How, how tired is that argument? Nintendo games are for kids. Nintendo games are for kids. Oh, you play Mario, Mario Kart, Animal Crossing? What are you doing playing those five-year-old, you know, little kid video games? Meanwhile, my kids aren't even playing those games. I mean, they do play Mario a bit, but, like, what are we talking about, man? Like, oh, that, that's a whole separate video talking about um, the, the grand misunderstanding of who Nintendo's core audience is because a lot of people think the core audience is soccer moms and children still carrying that whole reputation from the blue ocean we day saying, oh, look, the Switch is only as big as it is because it's a blue ocean strategy like the Wii and it's appealing to the soccer moms and the little kids, which is actually the opposite of what Nintendo did with Switch. But we could talk about that in a different video because understanding Nintendo's core audience is why you can actually understand how Nintendo is better set up for Nintendo Switch 2 to be successful because of who the audience is on Switch. But we'll get to that in another video. For this one, I just want to focus on that goalpost shifting. It keeps happening. People keep moving it around. They keep coming up with new reasons Nintendo is going to fail. Oh, Switch 2, it won't even be as powerful as a Steam Deck. It's not going to be as powerful as an ROG ally. It's it's not going to be able to play every single game going to PlayStation. Oh, it's got DLSS. Ha 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 ha. DLSS isn't that great. Meanwhile, PC gamers have been touting how awesome DLS is for years, but no, it's it's now a laughing stock because Nintendo and Nintendo fans are talking about its possibilities. Oh, ray tracing, don't even dream of it. And even if you have ray tracing, it's going to suck. So why even bother? Lol, 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 Nintendo, what are you doing? Oh, lol, 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 lol. And look, Nintendo isn't perfect. <laughs> I can admit that. Nintendo's made mistakes. And they'll continue to make mistakes. The eShop sucks. It's a mess. You know, not having a headphone jack on your controllers. That sucks. You know, not having localized voice chat. An ability to message your friends. Still using friend codes in 2024. When you got rid of friend codes on Wii U. But then you said, hey, you know what the problem was with Wii U? We didn't have friend codes. Let's bring them back. Yeah. All of this is some, like, dumb decisions. Nintendo makes dumb decisions sometimes. You know, not fixing Joy-Con drift. Dumb decisions. But for all those dumb decisions, Nintendo keeps releasing enough and doing enough that people who play their system are satisfied. I've talked to a lot of people that own Switch, and it's actually very hard to find anyone who bought Switch that can be honest with me and tell me, hey... I bought it and I regret buying a Switch. I regret it. The library is so huge. The Nintendo exclusives are so vast that, yeah, maybe you bought it to play Hogwarts Legacy and you're let down by that, but then Tears of the Kingdom picked you up. I find it fascinating as the internet keeps trying to pile on Nintendo and keep trying to tout how much better Sony is. Hey, Sony, Sony, we, uh, we win more games of the year than any other company. I'm like, cool, congrats. I, I, I'm glad you're winning a ton of Game of the Year trophies. That's something to be proud of for Sony and their developers. I'm really happy for them. Like truly, I'm not being sarcastic here. Congratulations on your much deserved success at events like the Game Awards. That is awesome. But 60 million people are playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe isn't the kind of game that's going to that's gonna win game awards. I mean, one, it's a port. <laughs> uh, two, it was back in 2017 when there were better games that came out. But like the next Mario Kart, it's not going to win an award. It might, it might win best family game or something, but uh, come on. It's not winning game of the year. And yet, it's probably going to have more people playing Mario Kart than any of these games that end up winning game of the year. And that isn't to insult those games. That's pointing out the wide variety of taste for what people play. And some people prefer playing games they know aren't masterpieces. I'll give you an example. I still play Fortnite sometimes. Sometimes with my kids. Sometimes by myself on live stream. And when I do, I know Fortnite's not like this masterpiece of a video game. But it is fun. And you can't look at fun 
and undervalue it. And that's one thing Nintendo has in spades. Nintendo has realized the number one reason people want to play games is for fun. And so they just make games that are fun to play. They're not always hard. They're not always like the most engaging stories. They're not always, you know, I don't know, the, the, the deepest brand new concepts in the world. Sometimes they're a little derivative, but they mostly keep them fun. They lose sight once in a while. Um, as an example, my personal opinion is Princess Peach Showtime lost sight of the fun. It had a lot of really fun ideas that just kind of stayed the same the whole game. So the luster fell off pretty quickly. And so then the game wasn't that fun. But that's not the case for most of Nintendo's releases. Every company has flubs. They have drubs. They have things that just aren't as good as you were hoping they would be. So I want to end this video by saying, number one, console wars suck. Can we just agree on that? Console wars are dumb. They're pointless. They're silly. And people are going to keep doing them because they need to defend their plastic box. They, they need to feel like their purchase was the right purchase. And if we're dishonest, some people just kind of get off on pissing off people that prefer something else. Now, I'm not pissed off. I'm good. I actually participate in console wars on various social medias because I find them to be entertaining. And I find it to be entertaining because of how absolutely asinine the conversation is. It just, it just always goes to places that it really shouldn't. And the goalpost is always shifting. Like, oh, Nintendo, you know, if you're a Nintendo gamer, you're not a real gamer because you don't get, you don't get the Assassin's Creed. And then meanwhile, Assassin's Creed is being blasted all over the place for historical inaccuracies, which I also think is a little weird because Assassin's Creed has never been about historical accuracy, uh, even from the very beginning. Now, historically accurate recreations of old, you know, times lost the time the periods the cities absolutely but like the stories being told have always kind of been their own thing i mean if you even just look at the entire story chain like like, like assassin's creed 2 and Ezio, if you look at the entire storyline of that like it goes to places that clearly are not historically accurate at all like there's a lot of yeah that's not that's not what happened <laughs> but it's okay it's okay because it's fun um, so, like, the new Assassin's Creed, as long as it's fun, that's really all that matters. Not the characters or the races or how historically accurate the characters might be to history. None of that matters. All that matters is the game is fun. But I'm just bringing this all up because it is a little tiring. Um, being a Nintendo fan, you can't just say something that makes you happy about Nintendo without somebody coming in and trying to put Nintendo down, trying to put them in their place. And with Switch 2 conversations, it's happening all the time. A lot of you with Switch 2, you're legit Nintendo fans that are just tired of hearing about it. Fine. But for others, Switch 2 is an opportunity to attack Nintendo again, to say, LOL, the system's going to bomb. It hasn't even been revealed yet, so what a weird take. Uh, it is what it is, guys. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. You can give me your thoughts on this whole mess of a conversation down below, and I will catch you in the next video.